Imagine that you're coding, deeply focused on the code editor, the time goes by and you're getting so much done. You break through anytime you get stuck and progress. But then reality hits you and you procrastinate. It takes you so much time to get started. And when you do, the phone, the bathroom, everything starts developing a sudden gravitational force and starts pulling you in until you're distracted and the cycle repeats. As if coding uninterrupted in a deep state of focus is true only in some utopian world or to select people. I remember only a handful of times where I was able to work with intense focus. And during those times I would be both so efficient and also learn so much. It's as if all the distractions in my mind melted away and it was just me with the coding editor. Since I was able to get so much more done and learn anything technical so much faster, I've decided that I'm going to completely change how I work and optimize for these intense moments where I'm coding and getting so much done. I've researched anything from neuroscientists to procrastination experts to psychiatrists and started applying everything they advise one by one. So once it looked like there is something innate in some of my colleagues that allow them to code and work deeply or just a few random days during the year that I somehow managed to do it myself. Well, not anymore. The first thing that you want to do is to set up the foundation so you could code in a deep state of focus without any distractions. It begins with starting the day with no social media or using the phone at all. And instead blocking 90 minutes where you jump right onto your code editor and start coding or reading code in the repository that you're working in. The idea is that you start with the difficult thing and not something in the periphery to avoid doing the hard thing. You want to do this first 90 minute block within three hours after waking up because this is when we are biologically primed to complete tasks that are analytical and require deep focus. That's because this is the time when our alertness peaks and that's what Carl Newport refers to in his book Deep Work or how Angie Huberman schedules his workday. If you're like me, you must have also thought that this is some kind of an exaggeration. Are you giving away popcorn with this crap that you're pushing? But try it once and you will realize how much you can actually get done when you focus only on coding without any distractions. It does take a couple of minutes to get into that flow state, but once you're past the initial friction, you will be all tunneled in. Now through Throughout the day, you might also have other obligations. I have meetings at work and after that, it's lunchtime. But the moment that you can get back to these 90 minute cycles, which are called ultradian cycles, you want to work in that fashion to get so much more done in so much less time. And it doesn't matter whether you're working on a piece of code or you're trying to learn a new tool or a programming language. Now, the key thing to keep this momentum going is how you recover between cycles from the very first moment that you wake up throughout the first 90 minute block in the morning up until the last one of the day. If you jump on the couch and grab the phone while you think that you are resting and relaxing, you're not actually recovering. I've tried to avoid doing that and instead do what flow experts recommend, which is going for a walk, taking deep breath, going for a workout or changing the location of where I work. Now I don't work out four times a day, but it's amazing just how simply walking around the house for five to 10 minutes and deeply breathing and sometimes changing the work location can help us reset and get back into coding with deep focus. After that, I just realized that that's why we don't really feel refreshed and it's not as easy to get back to work after spending a lot of time on the couch, scrolling on the phone. Try to delay the time that you're getting on the phone and try to get to a point where you're on the phone only after you're done with work for that day. You will be amazed of how much more you will be able to do. The higher the discomfort, the more your mind will try to seek comfort. Or when you need to read a file with 1100 lines of code, you have a lot of friction, you get stuck, and those are the moments that you would escape to your phone and the procrastination rabbit hole begins. When I started working in ultradian cycles, instead of breaking focus, I would become aware of that urge and instead tackle the challenge head on. If I get stuck on a complex error or something that I don't understand, I would resort back to first principles. Remember that whenever you program, anything that runs on the computer runs as a process. And there are defined ways in which processes interface with each other over the network 
or with the kernel, which is the main process of the computer. When I started working as a software engineer, I was so overwhelmed with all the different terms. And all of the descriptions of the different tech tools like Docker and Kubernetes were really unclear. For example, I was really confused by how you can use a programming language to access folders or get access to metadata on processes. Basically anything that the OS library in Python does. Using first principles, I realized that when you run a Python program, it runs as a process like any other. And every process interfaces with the kernel with system calls. Then all it took is to implement a library like the OS library in Python that creates wrappers over these system calls that give us ways to create or read data from folders or read environment variables. Now, I always try to dump down the vernacular and the confusing terms and descriptions of different tech tools to first principles or simple terms and abstractions. We simplify. On the other hand, when I'm about to procrastinate because I'm about to do a very laborious task like learning a whole new part of a large repo, I'm using a very simple advice suggested by Healthy Gamer GG. for those of you who don't know, he's a psychiatrist, where I'm not thinking in terms of a task or a goal, but rather the next best thing that I can do. So instead of thinking that I need to read these three files where each of them contain more than a thousand lines of code, I'm thinking, okay, I need to read just this file and let me just start with this one method. A couple of minutes later, I'm reading code and I'm all tunneled in. When I get stuck, it's back to the same friction from before. When it's something complex, I use first principles to dumb down and simplify. And other than checking Stack Overflow, I'll try to play with the code locally, use a debugger or print statements to debug, and depending on what it is, also use chat GPT to explain to me what that piece of code does. Use the ultradian cycles to align your coding sessions with the time that your mental performance peaks and intentionally tackle challenges head on and you'll be amazed of how much faster you progress. With the ultradian cycles, this is what my workday schedule looks like. Before, I was highly distracted and I would procrastinate every day for probably multiple hours in total when I get stuck or when I'm about to code. But now I have eliminated distractions and I'm taking breaks that actually help my mind recover rather than distracting myself on the phone and make it harder for me to deeply focus and code afterwards. Make sure to give this a try because it's going to dramatically affect the trajectory of your technical growth. You have no idea. You won't be on your A game every day. Some days are gonna be bad and that's okay. But you will get back to deep coding the next day. With that said, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.